name is Wahida Clark. I am the official queen of urban street literature. I've written 10 novels. And my latest one, which comes out in April, is Justify My Thug, which is part five to my Thug series. And my name is Mohammed Bashir. I'm an attorney out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. I've been practicing law for 24 years now, uh, 10 years too long. And I'm the author of the book, Raw Law, A Hip Hop Guide, An Urban Guide to Criminal Justice. Look forward to you reading it. What I feel is the greatest detriment to young adults today is that there is no guarantees for success. One of the uh, things that parallels that is that when you have no guarantees, you don't believe that there are guarantees, then you lose hope. And if you don't have hope, then you have really nothing that you're out there fighting for. Uh, you've got a generation that people call lazy, but it may just be that they've lost hope. They may not be lazy, they may have lost hope. So one of the greatest detriments that I see is that we have to instill in the community and in the younger generations that come up the sense of hope that we had when we were coming up. My generation had a revolution. We had the anti-war movement, we had Vietnam, we had things that we were intimately involved in that were uh, part and parcel of what it was that helped develop us into people. Without that energy, then they're going to lose hope, and when they lose hope, then they become lost. An individual can go to a facility where there is loads of programs, but if the individual doesn't take advantage of it, just wastes his time, nine times out of ten it comes out of prison worse than what he was. But you take another individual, you put him in an institution, say like Colorado, where you're locked down 24 hours a day, nothing, it's just you. But still, that person manages to take some courses and better themselves in any way that they can. It depends on the individual, that's my opinion. The system in and of itself is incarcerating someone who has probably, I, I'm assuming, has committed a crime. Their mindset isn't on getting myself right at that particular time. Their mindset is on, I just left a genre or a community or something that either I was a predator in or I was a victim of or I responded to improperly. Now the system in and of itself should have a component in there where yeah. it makes it mandatory for you to be begin to rehabilitate. Mm -hmm. Immediately when you walk mm -hmm. in and say, no, we know you're going to eventually come back out to society. We better make sure that we're not sending back out here the same predator that came mm -hmm. in. It doesn't have that as a component. It should be mandatory. Just like school is mandatory, if you go into a prison and you can't read, you need to come out of That's that prison right. able to read. Because if you don't come out able to read, you can't get a job. If you can't get a job, you're going to put that gun back in your hand. You're going to stick somebody up. You're going to sell That's those right. drugs. So if the system really wants to try to change, to change the way kids think, especially on the street, then the system needs to make this kind of stuff mandatory, that they have mandatory rehabilitation. And I have to agree totally because when I first went inside, uh, I was listening to people and I learned more ways to do more crime. But then after a year or two, I said, okay, I have to do something, I have to change. So you're right, when you first go in, you're not thinking about, you're either coming in feeling like a victim or just coming in just to do your time and make the best of it. So. Mm -hmm. The system was designed with the 13th Amendment in mind, criminal justice. The 13th Amendment at the United States Constitution is the one that people say is abolished slavery, but at the end of that, the caveat is slavery is abolished except when you commit a crime. So slavery is reinstituted by virtue of the criminal code and the criminal conduct. And the only people who have ever been slaves in America have been black people. And so to try to distinguish and say that there's, uh, it, whether it promotes or injures race uh, or, or racial disparity is that it has always featured black people, especially black males, as being the product of, of, of criminal justice. The ultimate outcome is that criminal justice profits off the incarceration of black males. It has from the beginning, which it began with slavery, and it continues to do it now. The system, I, again, ditto what Brother Muhammad just said. Um, the system, it needs a major overhaul. But, you know, we live in a democratic society. To, to get one law into place, you got 50 million people have to vote on it, and, and what happens? Nothing. It just sits there. So um, it needs a major overhaul.